Hello, it's Regina. Welcome back to my haunted library. I hope everyone is having a lovely uh, March so far. We at, over here in uh, Pennsylvania have gotten a lot of snow and it's nasty, so it's a really good time to hang out in your library and read horror comics. So that's what I've been doing. I've been uh, adding to my uh, 70s era eerie and creepy comic collection. I went a little nuts on uh, eBay. I, I don't want to really take them out of these uh, sleeves, but they are a little shiny. So uh, I got some from, oh geez, the, well let's just kind of go through them a little bit. This one is actually a Hammer Horror, Halls of Horror by Hammers. This is a British uh, publication that was um, associated with Hammer Horror Films. So this was good. This is kind of like, I did read through this one. It has some comics, but it also has like horror news from 1978 or whenever this was. And this is very much like a sentimental journey for me because it was about in 1970, from about 78 to 80, when I was reading um, Eerie and, and Creepy. So um, I guess I'll just tell a little story about that as I go through some of these. So I've, I've never been like a huge comic, like superhero comic person, although when I was a kid, um, I loved, it's, it's weird because it never really uh, became like a very popular um, comic, but I loved Metal Men. So I've been uh, tempted to start collecting some old Metal Men, and um, I don't know why, I just loved it. I think maybe it's just when you're, it's like what you read when you're a certain age and that's kind of what you attach to. And then the other comics that I did love that I do have somewhat of a collection of um, are, I don't even know if they still make these. They were romance comics aimed at teenage girls and they were like love comics. Back in uh, the 70s, there used to be a, a, a kind of like, I live in Bucks County, it's kind of like North maybe in Montgomery County, I'm not really sure, but there was this place called the Perky Yeomanville, and it was this old rural place, and you drive out in the country, and they would have this huge, like, flea market, Perky Yeoman flea market, or, or fair, or whatever it was, and there was a lot of that kind of stuff when I was a kid. We would go to these flea markets all the time, sell some stuff, uh, buy a lot of stuff, and there... Where I grew up, there were just a lot of flea markets, so we would go to this place called Perky Omenville, and you could buy just tons and tons and tons of comics for like a penny each. So we would come back with like a stack of comics, and for some reason, I only wanted to buy Metal Men and Love Comics. So, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm completely forgetting I was obsessed with Archie. I don't know how, I, I don't know how that happened. Yes, Archie, all of the Archie comics I loved I mean, I was in, absolutely in love with Archie comics. And uh, so between Archie and uh, Love Comics, which if you read them now, they're hilarious. I mean, they're so funny and, um, and great. But, you know, when I was, you know, 10, 12, whatever, I took it really seriously. But I, just, I was just absolutely in love with Love Comics. And... Um, and Eventually, I got into horror, so I got into creepy. And I remember this one, this issue with the uh, the abominable snowman or uh, Yeti, I guess he is, a great artwork. A lot of these uh, would have Frank Frank Frazetta covers. I mean, not, I don't think I have any here that are Frazetta. This one is very kind of like a takeoff of Frazetta. There's a Frank Frazetta museum that I plan to go to one of these days. I have never been, but I uh, decided that I'm going to do a little field trip. So I'll do a video about that. That would be fun. So yeah, so Creepy Comics. So how I got into Creepy and Eerie. I always thought Creepy was a little better than Eerie. I don't know. I was like a creepy snob. Is We had, um, growing up, uh, an older cousin who was about maybe 10 years older than me, and he collected all kinds, I mean, just, I don't know if he collected, but he just had tons and tons and tons of comics and mad magazines. I learned to read from my sister reading mad magazines to me. And uh, so yeah, mad magazines were huge in my household. 
and um, eerie and creepy. And I think I was the only kid in the house that actually really got into eerie and creepy. So as I'm going through these, like I said, it's a sentimental journey. I've been reading, carefully reading them because some of them are quite delicate. It shows, you know, how antique we all get. But um, they're great. The stories are so great. And I appreciate, like, all of the kind of monster news and stuff. Like, they have, um, you know, news about the latest monster movies. And this was during, like, Star Wars and Close Encounters. I know I was never a Star Wars fan. In fact, I never even saw Star Wars until a few years ago. I watched the first. I, I did see it maybe in the theater when I was a kid. I, I kind of blanked it out. I just was, sometimes when something became like super popular, I hated it. I, and that's kind of a bad quality, but I don't know why. If something, something that everyone loves, I don't like it generally. So I finally watched Star Wars as an adult. You know, it was it was great. I enjoyed it, but... I'm not like one of those Star Wars people. I love Close Encounters, but I was more into like Alien than uh, Star Wars. To me, Star, Star Wars seemed like for little kids at the time. So it shows, shows how much I know. So yeah, I just, I just love, I love the artwork of these. I'll do a close up of a couple of them. Some of them have a uh, color they're all very sensual. And I think that that is something, I mean, if I can admit to that when I was a kid, I love these uh, nubile women. You know, I know now that that is considered like un PC, but that is actually what I really, one of the things I really loved about these comics and still loved about them that, not that they were like um, misogynistic, but I love seeing those beautiful, women, scantily clad women with the swords. And, and a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times they were just sex objects. And a lot of times they would get like, you know, decapitated or something. But there was a certain brutality to all of this stuff that, um, I don't know, horror people always say, it's so fun. And if you're not a horror person, you probably think that's really weird. But horror people know what I mean. But it's like, wow, this is, I just watched someone get decapitated. It was so much fun. So, uh, I don't know, I'm going off on, I really don't have any script today, but I just feel so, like, comforted by getting these in the mail. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, when I was a kid and I sent away from my Archie Digest and it, it took the entire summer for it to come in the mail, you know, like it would never come and I got a free poster. And I guess that's all kind of like that stuff that when we get excited about things and when we were a kid, we try to recreate that a little bit as an adult to uh, chase away some of our demons, I guess, lurking in the shelves of our, our own cl uh, <laughs> closets and uh, bookshelves. But um, yeah, I just love eerie and horror and creepy. I, it just makes me feel really good to especially go and look at the ones that were from the era when I was really into it. So my cousin with the Mad Magazines, kind of getting back to him, my cousin Billy, had tons of these comics that I either took or he gave me, I don't remember, or sat around in his uh, den over it when we would be over at their house and just be reading them. And I have to say, it is creepy that is responsible for me um, never being able to eat turkey at Thanksgiving because I was re up in my uh, little, we, we didn't, I didn't have my own bedroom, but in our house, we had this loft and it was like, kind of like a, my like little private space when I was about 13. I think every 13 year old needs a little private space, but it was Thanksgiving day and I was reading a creepy comic about this um, apocalyptic story where there's this horrible plague and people have to uh, resort to cannibalism to survive. So as I'm looking at this image, and I'll never forget it, and I, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find it, I'm trying to recreate it. Um, I can't find it in, in this, but not yet anyway. I will find it. I will find it. Anyway, it's, um, I was looking at this in the, in the book, or in the comic, uh, the protagonist, I guess, ends up eating his girlfriend. <laughs> 
I don't. I, I'm hoping that she died first and then he ate her. He didn't kill her and ate her. But there was a image in you know in the drawing, the illustration of him like eating her arm. So her arms there with her like manicure, her long nails. Just as I'm looking at that, my mother says, "Dinner! It's Thanksgiving dinner. Dinner's ready. Come to uh, come to the table." So I rush down and I sit down and I look at the turkey, and I see a dead bird, you know, like a dead bird on the table. I don't see food. I don't see something to eat. I see the arm of the girlfriend being uh, eaten. That kind of made me uh, a vegetarian for a long time. I, I do eat meat now, but I still don't eat chicken or turkey or any kind of dead bird. And, and, and that's why. And I always kind of had a very icky feeling about Thanksgiving because of that. Now, why I want to go back and recreate that now, I don't know. There's, <sighs> I don't know. Maybe horror fans can enlighten me a little bit. There's a little, there's something about it that just, it's nothing like it. Anyway, I went off on a complete ramble, but I'm not done yet because uh, in this same vein of comics and this kind of thing, I bought a few. Weird mask scenes, yay. This time I got some cute little uh, bookmarks to go with it. So weirdmask.com, you can't read that, it's like too bright. And in the next number 14, I think, that's coming up, I have a story in. I have a very twisted story. I think it's like a twisted erotic, um, love stories or something. So I was really happy that they accepted my story and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be in the same zine as Steve Donahue. It's great. I feel like I'm finally kind of getting tapped into a booktube community. It's really great. It's like the horror um, fringe of booktube. Anyway, I went off on a total ramble, but if you love comics, horror comics, if you love creepy and eerie or anything like that, let me know. Any zines that you are a fan of, uh, put it in the comments below. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library, and I'll see you soon. Bye.